Okay, today I'll be talking about chapter 13, Light and Reflection. First of all, section 1, 13.1, uh, Characteristics of Light. Now, we'll start with the electromagnetic wave. Now, it is a wave that like consists of vibrating electric and magnetic fields perpendicular to each other. So remember, electric and like vibrating electric and ma magnetic fields perpendicular to each other. And then we have a light or light is a form of electromagnetic radiation. Now here we have the electromagnetic spectrum, uh, which is the range uh, that consists of seven types of electromagnetic waves. So as you can see here, first it starts with the radio waves, and then we go to the microwaves, and then to the infrared rays, which has also uh, other spectrums like uh, red, orange, yellow, green, blue, and violet. Then we have the ultraviolet and we have the x-rays and then finally the gamma rays. So as you can see here from when you're going from the radio waves to the gamma rays, so when you're going from left to right, the wavelength is decreasing and the frequency is increasing which is becoming more dangerous. Now when you are going from the gamma rays to the radio waves or from right to left, now the wavelength is bigger uh, where it's increasing and the, uh, the frequency is decreasing so it's not that uh, much dangerous but the, the waves could reach like a large distance because of the uh, wavelength. So as you can see here, the wavelength here is big and then when you go here, the wavelength is small. Now we have the applications for each, uh, for each electromagnetic wave. First of all, the radio waves. We have satellite and TVs are examples, microwaves, radar, phones, microwave oven. Then we have the infrared rays, sensors, and remote control. And then we have the visible light, camera, telescope, microscope, anything to do with lens. Uh, and then we have the ultraviolet, tan, and sterilizing. And then we have the x-rays, bone examination, and uh, cancer treatment. And then finally, gamma rays, which is also cancer treatment, and food irradiation. Now we have, so like in general now, the electromagnetic waves de depends on the wavelength and the frequency. So as the uh, frequency or as the uh, wavelength increases, the frequency decreases, and as the wavelength decreases, the frequency increases. Now, we have the speed of light. The speed of light is constant. Uh, the speed of light is constant, and it equals to 3 times 10 to the power of 8 meters per second. And then we have the formula. It's given into a formula, which is wavelength times frequency. Remember that lambda is the sign of wavelength. And wavelength is the distance from crest to crest or trough to trough. Now, we have Heyen's principle. Now, Heyen's principle says or states that waves can be approximated as rays. So, waves can be approximated as rays. Then we go to the wavefronts. Now, wavefronts are lines drawn tangent to the crest or trough of a wave. So, uh, as you see here in this diagram, wave rays are perpendicular to wavefronts. So, as you can see here, these are the wave rays. These are the wave rays. Uh, wave rays. Uh, wave rays. They are perpendicular to the wave fronts, and also the wave fronts are perpendicular to the wave rays. And then we have the uh, wave barrier. Okay. And then we have some of the uh, the waves here. Okay. So these are these are called sources of spherical waves. And then, as you can see here, the wavelength from here equals the wavelength from here to here. So it's like it has the same wavelength. Now we have illuminance. Now illuminance is the intensity of light. It decreases as you are moving away from the source of light and it depends on 1 over x squared. So it's like inversely proportional to x squared. Then we go to the luminous flux. It's the rate at which light is emitted from a source. Now um, let's do some practices. Now uh, gamma rays, first number one, gamma rays uh, bursters are objects in the universe that emit pulses of gamma rays with high energies. Now the frequency of the most energetic bursts have been measured at around 3 times 10 to the power of 21 hertz. What is the wavelength of these gamma rays? So first of all, let's know what is already given or what we already know, which is the speed of light. So C equals to 3 times 10 to the power of 8 meters per second. Then we have the given, which is the frequency, which is 3 times 10 to the power of 21 hertz. And now here we have to find the lambda, or the wavelength. And we know that the given equation is, uh, is C equals to lambda times frequency, or wavelength times frequency. So uh, it's going to be lambda equals to C over F. So 3 times 10 to the power of 8 over the frequency, which is 3 times 10 to the power of 21 
we get the answer to be 1 times 10 to the power of negative 13 meters. Now, the second question, what is the wavelength range for the FM radio band, 88 uh, megahertz and 108 megahertz? So, as you can see here, we have two frequencies, and they want us to find the wavelength. So, we are, we are going to find two wavelengths, because we, here it's given two frequencies. So, again, C equals to 3, we know that's already, 3 times, eight to the, three times 10 to the power of 8 meters per second. And then we have, let's call uh, it F1 and F2. F1 is 88 megahertz. So here we have to what we have to, uh, yeah, convert it. So it's going to be 88 times 10 to the power of 6 uh, hertz. Now then we have the second frequency, which is 108 megahertz. We convert it, it's going to be 108 times 10 to the power of 6 hertz. And here we have to find two lambdas using the two frequencies. So let's first do the first lambda. One equals, uh, lambda equals to C over F, lambda 1, the first lambda. C, which is 3 times 10 to the power of 8, over the frequency, which is 88 times 10 to the power of 6. So the first lambda, we find out it to be 3.4 meters. And don't forget the equation. Now the second lambda, uh, C over F, so this is like F2 and here it's F1. So 3 times 10 to the power of 8 over the second frequency, which is 108 times 10 to the power of 6. We found out the second lambda um, is 2.7 meters. Now, the third question. Now, short wave radio is broadcast between 3.5 and 29.7 megahertz. So we need to convert here. And we have two frequencies. And then to what range of wavelengths does this correspond? Why do you suppose this part of the spectrum is called short wave radio? So let's find the wavelength for each. So we know that C is given, it's C equals two. Three times eight to the power of mega, uh, meters per second. And then the F1 equals to 3.5 times 10, because we need to convert, or before convert, let's just write megahertz. And then we convert it 3.5 times 10 to the power of six. Hertz, and then we have the F2 equals to 29.7 megahertz. We convert it and it will be 29.7 hertz. So now let's apply the equation. Now let's find the uh, first wavelength. So here we have, we're going to have to find two wavelengths. So C equals to F1, uh, C over F1. Over uh, equals to 3 times 10 to the power of 8 over the F1, which is 3.5 times 10 to the power of 6. So the first lambda is um, 85.7 meters. Then we have um, the second lambda over F2. So equals to 3 times 10 to the power of 8 over the second, which is 29. Sorry, uh, it should be. the second lambda so the second lambda is 10.1 meters now we have the last Question, what is the frequency of an electromagnetic wave if it has a wavelength of 1 kilometer? So first C equals to 3 times 10 to the power of 8 meters per second. Wave then lambda. We have here now lambda. Here we have to find the frequency. So the lambda equals to 1 kilometers. So we're going to have to change it. So it's going to be 1 times 10 to the power of 3 meters. So now we have here it's going to be frequency equals to C over lambda. So 3 times 10 to the power of 8 over the lambda, which is 1 times 10 to the power of 3. So, the frequency here is 3 times 10 to the power of 5 hertz. Now, that's it for this lesson. Now, the second lesson, 13.2, uh, uh, sorry, flat mirrors. 
Now, first of all, let's begin with reflection. Now, reflection is the change in direction of an electromagnetic wave at a surface that causes it to move away from the surface. Now, the texture of the surface uh, affects how it reflects light. And we have two types of uh, reflections here, the diffuse reflection and the specular reflection. First of all, the diffuse reflection. It's a reflection from a rough, rough, texture uh, surface such as paper or unpolished wood. So as you can see here, it's, uh, it's like reflecting in different directions. Now let's go to the specular reflection. It's a reflection or like light reflected from smooth shiny surfaces such as a mirror or water in a pond is reflected in one direction. So as you can see here, it's all reflected in one direction. Now we have the angle of incidence is the angle between a ray that strikes a surface and the line perpendicular to that surface at the point of contact. Then we have angle of reflection is the angle formed by the line perpendicular to the surface. So as you can see here in this diagram, we have the sun and it reflects incidence rays, which will reflect back also what reflected rays and into the like and the normal is like between it. So we have as you see as you can see here we have two angles, angle of incidence and angle of reflection. The angle of incidence is the angle between the incidence ray and the normal. The angle of reflection is the angle uh, it's the reflection uh, it's the angle between the normal and the reflected ray. So in specular reflection, the angle of incidence is always equal to the angle of reflection. Okay? In specular reflection. Now we have some here, uh, some of, uh, examples. Now, uh, a reflection of a light from the surface of a lake on a calm day is specular reflection. Reflection of light from a plastic trash bag or paper is diffuse reflection. Then we have reflection of light from the lens of eyeglasses is specular reflection. Then we have reflection of light from a carpet is diffuse reflection. Now let's go to the properties of flat mirrors. Now first of all, it's virtual image. Uh, it's uh, it has like virtual image, which is the image formed by rays. Then we have equal distance from mirror, so like uh, the the distance uh, like uh, from the object to the mirror is equals to the distance from the image to the mirror. So as you can see here, so as we know that the uh, the distance between the object uh, object and the mirror is called p, and and the image distance okay is called the q. So they equal to each other. Okay. Then we have, they have the same height, so the, the object has the same height as the image height, and it is flipped. So these were like the properties of flat mirrors, flat mirrors. Now as you can see here, this is a diagram, uh, let's uh, erase it all and try to practice it all again like the previous uh, picture, which is from the book. Uh, now as you can see here, we have two trees, so we said that they have the same height, okay? So um, it has the same height. Now let's say, um, first of all, um, we'll put the line in between. Not equal line, but yeah. Uh, okay. Now let's say uh, we want to point. We want to choose this point of the tree. So we'll draw the line like that to the mirror, this is the mirror, and then it will reflect back. But then here behind the mirror we do dotted lines to the tree. Okay. Then, here we're going to also choose another point to here, let's say. Okay. Then it will, before reflecting back, let's draw a line to see, like, to make it, like, perfect and not, like, make any mistakes or anything. So we'll draw lines like from here to here. Okay, and then it's gonna be like that. So that's the reflection of this ray. And then we have the the angle of incidence and reflection here. it for this lesson. Now moving on finally to the last lesson, curved mirrors. Okay. Now curved mirrors. We have two types of curved mirrors, the concave mirror and the convex mirror. Now first of all, the concave mirror, as you can see here, this is the mirror. Uh, let's say we draw lines. 
or rays, I mean, which are, yeah, lines. So uh, it will reflect back, both of the rays will reflect uh, lines that will meet at the same point, which is the focal point. This is called converging. Now, in the convex case, we have uh, the mirror, okay, and then rays, but then it will separate from each other. They will go away from each other. This is called diverging. This is in the convex case. Now, uh, as you can see here, let's say we draw in a mirror. This is the concave, and we have here the center, and we have the focus. Now, the distance from the center to the mirror is called the radius. And in the concave, we have five cases. First of all, let's know what's concave uh, spherical mirror. Uh, a spherical mirror, it's a spherical mirror with light reflecting from its silvered concave surface. Now, let's start with the cases. Now, first case. It's before the center. As you can see here, the object before the center. First of all, we will draw, the first ray that we'll draw is from the object like uh, to the mirror, but in like parallel. So as you can see here, we have drawn it parallel. Then it will reflect through the focal point, okay? Then we do another ray that will go also through the focal point, and it will reflect a line back to the point here. And then we draw another ray that will go through the center, Okay, as you can see, it will reflect back. And then it will create here a, a place where all the rays meet, which is where the image is formed. So here, as you can see, the image is real, inverted, but smaller. So as you can see, it's smaller than this. Now we have the second case, which is at the center, the object at the center. So first we'll draw again the parallel line to the mirror, and then it will reflect back through the focal point, and then we'll draw another ray through the focal point, then to the mirror, and then it will reflect back, okay, through this point where the also the image is formed. Now uh, it's real, inverted, and the same, the same uh, height. Now the third case is between the center and between the focus. The object is between the center and the focus. So first we'll draw another par we will first draw a parallel line to the mirror. Then it will reflect back through the focal point, okay? And then uh, we'll draw another line through uh, another ray through the uh, focal point. And then it will reflect back at this point. But then here, be since it's be uh, before the center, this will go through the center, but it will be like as in like that, okay? So it also meet in this point where the image is also formed where the image uh, is also formed here. Now here it's uh, real, inverted, but bigger. As you can see here, it's bigger. And it's real and inverted, or flipped. Now we have the fourth case is at the at the focal point. So as you can see here, we'll draw a parallel line. It will go to the mirror, but and then you, you can see here it's, it flex back through the center. And then we draw another line parallel here. Okay, uh, we draw another, first we draw a, a parallel, line, uh, parallel line here, it will go through the focal point, and then we'll draw the line uh, from here to the mirror, and then it will go through the center, but here as you can see, there will not be a meeting point for those rays, so there's like, it's infinity, it's, they're never going to meet, so there is no image, so in the, at the, like the fourth case, at the focal point, when the object, whenever the object is at the focal point, in the concave case, there is no image. Now the last case, the fifth case, which is before the focal point. So as you can see, the object is here. First of all, we'll draw a parallel line from the object to the mirror. And then it will reflect back through the focal point. Then we'll draw another line. Okay, that will go, it will reflect back, but upward this time. Okay, and then we'll draw another line and it will go through the uh, center, but this time the image is formed behind the mirror. So as you can see here, the image is here. It's behind the mirror. It's upright and it's virtual. So it's like it's not real. Virtual as in not real. Now we have real image. Uh, is the image formed by the intersection of uh, of uh, light rays? So as you can see here, this is called uh, where is it? This is called a real image. This is an example of a real image. It's not virtual. 
Now we go to the mirror equation. Now, so as you can see here, the mirror equation is 1 over F equals to 1 over P plus 1 over Q. The F is the focal point. The P is the distance from the uh, distance from the object to the mirror. And Q is the distance from the mirror, uh, from the image to the mirror. So uh, if you have this equation, we can, like, if you have the P and Q, you can find the F. If you have the F and Q, you can find the P. If you have the F and P, you can have, you can find the Q. So again, as we said that the P is the distance from the object to the mirror, the Q is the distance from the image to the mirror, and then we have F is the focus to the mirror, the focal point, like the focal point to the mirror, and then we have R is the center to the mirror, and then we have H is the length of the object, and then H prime is the length of the image. Now we have equation of magnification. So M equals to H prime over H equals to negative Q over P. Now we have the sign of M. If the M is positive or the magnification is positive, it's upright and virtual. But if, and if it's negative, it is inverted and real. Okay, and we have the magnification. If it's more than one, the image is uh, bigger than the object. Okay, the image is bigger than the object. If the M is less than one, less than one, the image is uh, smaller than the object. And if M equals to one, uh, the image equals to like it equals to the object. It will have the same uh, heights. Now, a concave mirror has an object at 10 centimeters. Now, this is a practice. At 10 centimeters, if the image is formed at six centimeters in front of the mirror. So, first of all. Let's find the P and the Q. As you can see here, the P and Q is, uh, first of all, as they told you object, so object to mirror is the P. So the P equals to 10 centimeters. Then we have uh, the image is formed like the image to the mirror, which is the Q, so 6 centimeters. Okay, now, um, now let's apply the equation of the mirror, 1 over F equals to 1 over P plus 1 over Q. So 1 over P, which is what? 1 over 10 plus 1 over 6. The 1 over F will equals to will equal to 4 over 15. So the F it will equal to 15 reciprocal over uh, 4. So it will be 3.75 centimeters. So to find the center, we will multiply, uh, we'll, uh, we'll multiply the, free, uh, the, sorry, the focal point by, the, by 2. So it will be two times three point seventy five. So this uh, the center will be seven point five centimeters. Now let's start first drawing. Okay, this is the mirror. Okay, now this is the C. This is the F. The object is before the center at 10 centimeters so we'll draw first the parallel line uh, okay then we'll draw another line through the focal point okay it doesn't because there's no ruler and then another line through the center so this one Here, this line, first of all, let's make, let's make this bigger. This line, okay, will reflect like that. So this will be like the meeting point, okay? So this is where like the image is formed. So let's say this is the image here formed. It should be like before the focal point, but a little bit here. But because um, it's with the laptop, so it's the distances are not like the same. So uh, if you do it like in a copy book and using pencil and rulers, you will have the exact same distance, uh, same equal distances. So now we have to find the magnification. Okay, so the formula is, uh, formula is H prime over H equals to negative Q over P. The P is always positive. Uh, equals to negative 6 over 10 
because the Q is 6 and the P is 10 equals to negative 0 0.6 centimeters. So as you can see here, here this is small and this means that the image is real. Okay. Now we have the convex uh, spherical mirrors. It's a mirror whose reflecting surface is an outward curved segment of a sphere. Outward. So I can, uh, this is like different than the concave. It's outward. So we'll put the, we place the object here. Okay. We'll draw a parallel line and then it will diverge. As we said before, it will go far away. But then behind the mirror, we'll draw like dotted lines that will go through the focal point. Okay, through uh, here the it will like be the uh, the point where this ray and this ray like will meet. Then we'll draw another uh, line, and then it will go through the center. Okay, so this line will uh, will go through this like behind the mirror. It will go through the center, and we have this line. It will reflect back. Okay, it will reflect back. So as you can see here, this will this is where the image is. Formed, and this is the mirror and this is the object so this is the object and this is the mirror so it's virtual upright but here as you see it's smaller it's also smaller okay so this last so first this line it will diverge then you'll draw points through here to here and then you this line and then it'll meet here but this will go through the center and also through this point this is where the image is formed And that's it. Thank you.